People, we are back. There are only three Glacier Lords that have been released, uh, and I have all three, so... Tusker is his name. Tusker is his leadership. Uh, he has no bio, though, uh, unfortunately. I think that is the only feeling with all of these, uh, these Glacier Lords. They don't come with a little bio. Uh, or a tech spec reader. Maybe that'll be something for the future that uh, this line does. They go, hey, why not put a bio with this and that little bit of red plastic that went over the top of this. That would be quite nice, actually. So, uh, yeah, Tusker is the one we'll have a look at today and we'll play that fantastic theme tune that everybody's singing. Thanks to me, of course. Uh, no one's singing it. But let's go. Glaciers! <laughs> So unfortunately this is the last time I'll get to talk about the retro future stuff until the rest of the line comes out, I'm afraid. But this time I get to talk about the leader of the group, Tusker. I assume he's the leader because he's the biggest. I tried thinking to myself how many mammoth transformers are there and there, there's really not a lot and it's a shame because this is a really impressive looking robo mammoth thing. It's got a lot of bulk and weight to it and I love the colour choices, a big red mammoth seems to really do it for me I guess with Peach. I mean, that's a weird choice, but it works. He does have some holes in his butt, but that's really for his combined mode. And his little partner dude, ee, he's not too bad either. He's not my favorite, but I just love the, the profile from the front of this guy. I love the ears, the tusks, and the trunk. The trunk is insanely well done. And I will say that I think Tusker's little robot is probably my least favorite. I really don't like his face, uh, but the articulation is all the same. Uh, exactly what you would expect, uh, and I quite like the colours on it. It's just that face. He's very derpy looking. Uh, we do have the slot in the top here for his Beast Rider mode, and to hide it, you got to flip up this panel for his chest, uh, and it covers it up quite well. Uh, it's not the most inventive out of all of them. Uh, I think that still goes to Fangrow here, uh, and it's not the least inventive, which again goes to here he is, Tail Club. Uh, yeah, so he's about in the middle in terms of uh, how well he hides it. And, you know, you just slide him in the top there. And he looks really dominating, like, riding this giant mammoth. Like, if I saw this, I'd, I'd cack myself, you know? <laughs> and in terms of articulation, what do we have? Well, the tusks actually do move individually. Uh, they don't call him Tusker for nothing. Ho, ho, ho! I'm hilarious. The trunk does move. Not a huge amount. It would have been nice if that had a joint there. But, you know, you get two little joints here to curl the tusk, which... You know, I wouldn't expect from the original G1 kind of stuff. The legs move forward, but only like this because it's on the transformation joint. Uh, and the back legs are completely solid as well. He's the biggest brick out of all of them. Uh, but being a brick, he does have a really good shape and he feels really solid. I love how all of this kind of adds to the oomph of him. Like, this part you take off uh, and it's a great way of storing stuff. It just, you know, pegs in there. It's really nice and secure. Uh, and the legs underneath the body obviously build up the kind of understomach, well, understomach, whatever. Uh, just really well done, really good bits of engineering to make him feel just oomphy and solid. But let's turn him into a robot! So here we have Tusker in his robot mode, again with some stickers applied and some not. Uh, he's big, he's chunky, he's got a big commanding kind of shape to him which I really like. And again, really nice colour placements, but I just don't like that head. Uh, he does have a lot more backable than the other ones as well, but it's not a huge issue uh, considering what this guy will turn into. Now in terms of articulation on this big meaty dude, he has a nice elbow joint. Uh, he can move at the shoulder as well with a nice ratchet. Not going all the way around, of course, because it will bash into his backpack. Uh, not a huge issue. His legs can move individually or together, and they go forward and they can bend at the knee. You can also split them apart, but that's really due to transforming into a torso. Uh, so we won't really talk about that, because it's not needed. We'll just straighten these legs out. And I suppose if you really want to, what you can do is you can flip the face down and use his little one. Uh, if you're not a fan of how this face looks, which I'm not, I think this is his weakest point. But it's kind of deliberately done like that, I guess. It's meant to look a bit silly, but I kind of wish they could have given him a, a bit of a better look. But there you go, that's my only issue. There is something I'd like to show you for this head, so what we'll do is we'll take Tusker out, 
Uh, he can be a little bit stiff and faffy to come out. Come on. There we go. Uh, and I'll get Fangro here, put him in. You know, you just slide him in. And he goes in fine, but you, when you flip the head up, just because of the shape of Fangro's face, uh, it doesn't go in smoothly. It doesn't go in well at all. So if you want uh, the other guys in this body, you'll either need to play around or just be aware that the shape of the head here probably isn't going to fit the, the big face of Tusker. Unlike little Tusker's robot who has a nice smooth head and just plops in there without any issue at all. He does have a very flat face though, doesn't he? Interesting. He does of course have some accessories, so we have of course his trunk here, which you just basically straighten out uh, into quite a nice looking rifle, uh, which I never would have suspected, and it pegs in really well to his arm here, or to his hand, I should say. Uh, and I, I love the way this gun looks, it's like a double barreled elfin shotgun, uh, I kind of dig it, and he's got missiles in his hand as I mentioned, and this back Bit, you know the chest part you flip this part down shiver it in his shoulder and again very g one very snap trap actually being able to do that so that's kind of a nice nod as well i think it's really worth mentioning tusker's box uh, more than the other ones because look at it it's got like it's been out in the sun too long and it's just faded away and we've even got like coffee stains or something up here at the top which is just ridiculously cool it's like, my god, how bad is this box being treated? Uh, this also has some other treats apart from the side here. We have the kind of old G1 battle art thing, which is really neat to see. Uh, we have the Glacier Lord, as usual. Uh, again, looks really good. And then on the bottom, we have fake animation cells. This is crazy. I really wanted to see these guys in the cartoon. We have animation errors and, you know, liberties taken with how these look. I just love the fact that they've got this on. I'd love to have seen a cartoon of these dudes, to be honest. The weapon's really good. It doesn't, like, off-balance him. The only bit that's a bit wobbly is uh, the backpack here, and I'll show you why right now. So from a meaty robot, he turns into a really beefy torso. With, again, the nice colouring that we've seen on him, of course. And a head sculpt that took me a while to get used to, but now I'm really digging it. It's a, a nice little nod, I think, back to Defensor. Uh, and the back kibble isn't too bad, really, either, I will say. Now, things I really love about this is he's got missile pods on him. I love the fact that he can shoot from his chest and then from his shoulders. I think that's super cool. The only issue I really have is, I don't know if this is meant to lock in somewhere. Uh, it just feels a little bit wobbly, like right there. It just wobbles, and I don't know if there's some way to lock this in place and just make it a bit more secure or not. Uh, it just seems to flip down, and that's it. Maybe maybe I've got to push this down or something like that, but I don't know. It, that, that's the only issue I have with it, really. Uh, apart from that, you know, he can look up very slightly if you choose to, but he's a torso. He's not meant to have articulation. Uh, the legs can't move forward, but they can move out to the side. And uh, that's about it, really. That's uh, that's all his articulation in this mode. What a shock. And you can do stuff with the accessories, all of them, so far. So we get fine grows here, and we can peg it onto this port here uh, and extend the barrel and make it a single barrel. And then we have two ports at the bottom here for uh, Tail Club's tail. As long as you make sure the spikes are not in the way, you just twist it, obviously. And it slides into the grooves in the gun. And that's, I mean, that's quite nice. But so far, it's not a desperately impressive weapon. It's a little bit better, but, you know, it's going to get better in the future. Speaking of those two, how about we get them right here? and connect them to uh, Tusker. So, you know, it's Scramble City, ports and pegs and whatnot, and you, there we go, slide them in. And Fangro here, and you may be asking yourself, hey Andy, where are the fists? Well, let me tell you, people of the internet, as I try and bounce him and then zoom the camera out, because he is quite big. There we go, that's better. Uh, so you may be asking, where are the fists, Andy? Well, let me show you, because this is oh, this is maybe the best bit. The fists are stored here. They're actually stored in the toy in a really neat way. Uh, they do have a little bit to grip onto with your finger. And it will come out. There we go. 
Uh, and I, I think that's fantastic. I, I can't believe how smart the engineering was to go, hey, how about we hide these fists just in the legs? Uh, and, you know, when you add two other dudes here, uh, you get an idea of what the Glacier Lord will look like all complete, obviously to a point. And he's super impressive, super cool. I love everything about him apart from the wobbliness of his head. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what this weapon looks like when it's all uh, teamed up with the other two uh, dudes' weapons as well. I, this, this, uh, this series is my favorite third-party thing to have came out so far. It's an amazing line, especially if you like G1 stuff, then it's great. If you don't, then obviously it ain't going to do nothing for you. Uh, but Tusker is a delight to own. He is big, chunky. He looks like a leader. Again, he fits in well with G1. He's got great coloring to make him stand out from the other combiners. Uh, I, I just love him. I can't wait to get the rest of them. And it's going to be a very long wait until we get them. Uh, so until those last two come out and I do a proper look at the Glacier Lord, uh, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you uh, for something else, I'm sure. Catch you later, guys.